Okay, so welcome to Rational Expressions and Equations Lesson 1. So the first thing we're going to learn is simplifying rational expressions. And so uh, in previous courses, we learned that the quotient of two integers is a rational number. So this is basically just like a fraction. And so it's when we can express two integers like this. So then when they say instead of integers, if we have polynomials, this is called a rational expression. And so uh, we're going to be working with uh, problems that have polynomials in both the numerator and the denominator. And so we are going to be doing a lot of factoring still. So all those things we learned in our factoring unit, we're going to have to remember, including GCF, difference of squares, uh, factoring by inspection, so that's type 1 factoring, and decomposition, type 2 factoring, and then grouping as well. So this is all review, but it's all things that we need to have in our toolbox for this um, unit. So if we flip over the page and we get to uh, equivalent forms of rational expressions, so what we're going to do is, we're going to do x is equal to 1. So let's substitute that into our equation. So we have 2 times 1 plus 2, and 1 squared plus 3 times 1 plus 2. So that gives us 4 over 6 and 2 over 3. And so. In our second equation, we get 2, 1 plus 2, so we get 2 over 3. So we can see that we get the same answers for both. And so this means that we might have what we call equivalent um, rational expressions. So we can test that out over here. So let's go like this. We'll go 2x plus 2, x squared, plus 3x plus 2. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor each one, or factor both the numerator and the denominator. So in the numerator, we can take our GCF out. And in the denominator, we find that we can have two factors, x plus 1 and x plus 2. And we say, sweet, these cancel out, which leaves us with 2 over x plus 2. So we know that these two are indeed equivalent fractions, or sorry, equivalent um, expressions. So um, I'll even write that there, equivalent. And so we say that this here is the lowest term or the simplest form. Okay, so we will, we also have that written right here. So we'll say lowest term or simplest form. Um, maybe throw a star in your notes right here, because this is a really common factoring mistake. They say these two twos cannot be canceled, um, because if you want to divide by two, you have to be able to divide the entire denominator by 2. And because we just have an x and not 2x, we can't do that. So maybe highlight this as well. We cancel term, or we cancel factors, not terms. So we can't just cancel like individual things like that. OK, so if we turn the page, um, we will do x is equal to negative 1 and x is equal to negative 2. So let's go, okay, 2 times negative 1 plus 2, negative 1 squared plus 3 minus 1 plus 2. So we go, okay, so that gives us 0 over 0. And we know that we cannot divide anything by 0. Even if you put this into your graphing calculator, 
you'll get an error that says undefined. So we have a problem here. When x is equal to 1, we don't get an answer. Or when x is equal to negative 1, we don't get an answer. Okay? And if we look at this one here, we'll do the same thing. We actually do get an answer. We get 2 over 1. So this means that when we're looking at where the expression is undefined, we have to look at the original, not the simplified form. Okay, so let's try it for negative 2 now. So we have 2 times negative 2 plus 2 gives us negative 2 squared plus 3 times negative 2 plus 2 gives us negative 2 over 0. So it's still undefined. Even though we have a negative 2 on top, as long as we have that 0 in the denominator, it's always going to be undefined. And then for this one, if we do it, we actually do get undefined for even the simplified expression. We get 2 over 0 as well. So let's look at why this happens. So we know that this is not defined at negative 1 and negative 2. So if we look at our denominator and we factor it, we get x plus 1, x plus 2. And so if we go x plus 1 is equal to 0, x plus 2 is equal to 0, we actually get x is equal to negative 1 and x is equal to negative 2. So the thing is that because our denominator cannot equal 0, we know that our factors cannot equal 0. So we actually have x plus 1 cannot equal 0, and x plus 2 cannot equal 0, which gives us x cannot equal negative 1, and x cannot equal negative 2. Okay? So then they say for which values of x is this expression not defined? So we do the same thing. We go, okay, well, x plus 2 cannot equal 0, x cannot equal negative 2. So when we look at this, we say that where, or the values that x cannot equal are called non-permissible values, and they're known as the restrictions. So if you ever get a question that asks for the non-permissibles or what the restrictions are, that's what we're asking you to find. And so non-permissible values are values that make the variable in the denominator, or values of the variable which make the denominator equal to zero. Because we know once the denominator is equal to zero, the expression is undefined. And then put a huge star here, the restrictions must be determined before dividing out common factors. So let's go like big stars here. So you always want to find your non-permissibles or your restrictions before you start to simplify. Okay? Even if the factor cancels out, like here our x plus 1 cancels out, x cannot equal negative 1 is still a factor, or still a non-permissible, sorry. Okay, so it's really important that you remember to do that first before you simplify. Okay, so let's do some really quick examples. So in class example number 1, we're going to be doing all of these. So they say express in simplest form stating the non-permissible values. So First, first, we find the non-permissibles. Second, we express in simplest form. Okay? So, for our non-permissible, we go 2x cannot equal 0, so x cannot equal 0. Okay? Then in simplest form, all we have to do is um, see if we can divide any factors out. So, we can go 12x squared is actually equal to 6. I'll put it down here. 12x squared over 2x is equal to 6x times 2x and 2x. And so, 
We can cancel these out. And so our answer is, in simplest form, 6x. And our non-permissibles is that x cannot equal 0. So x can equal anything in the world except 0. Okay, so for b, our non-permissibles, we find them just by using our factors. So we go, okay, a plus 7 cannot equal 0. So a cannot equal negative 7. And then a plus 1 cannot equal 0. a cannot equal negative 1. So here they're non-permissibles. And then just by looking at our expression, we can say, oh, well, these a plus 1 cancel out. So in its simplest form, we get a minus 6 over a plus 7. And that's our expression in its simplest form. Okay? And then so for this one, it's, we have to do a little bit more work because we have to find our factors on the bottom. But it's just type 1 factoring. So we find that y plus 4 is over x minus 5, y plus 4, like that. And so before we start to simplify, we want to find those non-permissibles, right? So let's go y minus 5 cannot equal 0, y plus 4 cannot equal 0, y cannot equal 5, y cannot equal negative 4. Okay? And then so, then we can look at this and say, okay, well, our y's plus 4 can both divide out, which leaves us with 1 for y minus 5. So when you divide y plus 4 out of the numerator, it doesn't leave you with nothing. It leaves you with 1, right? So we get 1 over y minus 5. So then for d, <coughs> similarly, we have to factor both the top and the bottom this time. So our top we can factor into x plus 7 and x plus 4. And then for the bottom, we get a difference of perfect squares here. We have x plus 7, x minus 7. Okay? So for our non-permissibles, we can go, okay, x plus 7 cannot equal 0, x minus 7 cannot equal 0. So x cannot equal plus or minus 7. Okay, so now we can start to try and simplify. So we can look at our expression and we say, okay, well, those x plus 7s can both be divided out. And that leaves us with x plus 4 all over x minus 7. Okay? So that's our final answer. So that's all there is to lesson number 1. So for homework, we have homework. 1 to 5.